Are you fed up of life? Earning a pathetic salary, working long hours, having an ungrateful boss, facing office politics, the constant fear of losing your job, and after paying rent, groceries, shopping, and children's expenses, you were left with hardly any savings. Is this the life you dreamed of? Or do you wish to change your life forever? Meet Loy Macedo, the world's number one personal branding coach. He will help you identify the real you. Position and sell yourself by getting the job of your dreams and make good money anywhere in the world. If you do not believe me, Google his name, Loy Macedo, and you will find 2 million web links online and over 200 recommendations from very happy clients. So the question is, do you want to change your life? If yes, then contact Loy Macedo. www.loymacedo.com Whoislloymacedo.com Thinkpersonalbranding.com What are you waiting for? Do it now. Hi there, Lloyd Macedo. Swinging to you from LloydMacedo.com. Who is Lloyd Macedo and Think Personal Branding? All right. Um, today's video is actually going to be a rather special episode. Now, this video is going to, sh uh, I'm going to share with you my thoughts uh, after doing the analysis and speaking to the people who are based in Dubai, that is Expo 2020. So I've been speaking to these people who are actually working in uh, Dubai Expo 2020, uh, various projects. And what I did is I compiled a list of, um, you know, data. I analyzed it. I studied it. And then I decided, OK, why not share with people my top 100 predictions for Expo 2020? Initially, I thought it would be my top 20 predictions for Expo 2020, you know, because 20 and Expo 2020, it matches. But then... As I started to compile the data, it started to grow more. So from 20, it became you know, 30, 40, 50. Finally, I was like, okay, let me not keep a number. Let me just, you know, just gather the data and choose what is best. It went up to, let's say, you know, 200 and something. But then I was like, no, 200 is a bit too much, 200 and whatever. Let me give the main bits. So what I've gathered here is the data, uh, analyzing the data, sorry, analyzing the data of Expo 2020 from people who are actually working in Expo 2020 with Expo 2020 or in the projects. And uh, these are my top 100 uh, predictions that are going to happen with regards to Expo 2020. So prediction number one, if you purchased a UAE property during its peak, any property, it could be land, it could be building, it could be anything. If you have purchased a, a property during its week, it will lose nearly 60 to 90% of its value in comparison to the peak. This, uh, my gut feeling says, because people, when they purchase a property, they purchased it at an uh, inflated value. Okay. Now, during Expo 2020, um, obviously, the property prices have come down to almost 30% all uh, over the period of time. It is going to decrease even further after Expo 2020 because uh, there are going to be people who will be constantly selling. There'll be nobody who'd want to buy. And if they want to buy, they would obviously buy it at a throwaway price. Others will say, I'm sorry, I can go to more stable economy. So the first one is, if you purchased a UE property during its peak, it will lose 60 to 90% of its value. Okay. Uh, second one, oil prices obviously will be unpredictable, but now they are going to cause chaos. It's going to prove that the market is very volatile and uh, the oil prices are going to affect each and every segment of the UAE market. Okay. The third one is if there is any war or there is any tension between Iran, Saudi, or let's say Qatar and Bahrain or any of the Middle East countries, uh, the country that will pay the highest price will be UAE. Okay. Uh, uh, point number four is there will be various teams that will be formed, uh, groups that will be formed within the Middle East. The unity will no longer be there after Expo 2020 because Everyone's going to be selfish. Everyone's going to focus only on their economy. Before they were united, now it's not. Point number five is a majority of business houses and brands will shut down their shop. Um, the top guys uh, who are owners of the company or the top guys who are the CEOs or whatever, they will end cash and they will say bye-bye. The people who will actually suffer are the lower level ones or the people who, especially the employees who have taken credit cards and loans. If you have taken a credit card loan and you're working for such a company, you're going to get fucked. Okay, that's without a doubt. Point number six is plenty of people will be running away from UAE, plenty, who have taken loans, who have taken credit cards, uh, and they know that they cannot pay back. Um, I've got many cases where 
a person has taken a loan based on the higher salary that he got after which he lost his job he got the only job that he could get was maybe 40 or 50 percent lower than what he was actually getting and the salary the amount um, you know when you have a lesser salary and you have such a large loan and when you calculate it's going to take you 10 years or 20 years to pay back the loan people think you know is it worth me staying 20 years to pay off this loan and slogging like a dog in the bank charging you know hidden charges and interest so many people are going to run away taking their credit uh, you know without paying loans credit cards and yes, many people will even scam other people and run away with their money. Point number seven, plenty of hotels will come up. Uh, there'll also be Airbnb. Many such um, businesses will rise just to accommodate the number of tourists that are going to come in Expo 2020. Uh, number eight is people will see uh, a lot of hotels. They'll have change in management. New management will come in. Um, so if you're working for uh, the hotel, uh, whatever you have done for the hotel until now, when the management changes, it's like reset. The new management doesn't know you. They don't recognize anything that you've done. You've got to slog it out all over again. And with the hotel management, uh, when they change their management in any company, it's like uh, whatever they promised you is going to be null and void. Uh, there's not going to be any salary increment. In majority of the cases, they actually decrease the remuneration and packages. Point number nine. Emirati businessmen will apply for multiple passports uh, wherever they can invest and get a passport they will do that or wherever they can uh, let's say um, you know hold an Emirati passport and something else or they if that choice is not available they'll cancel and they will make sure that they you know get the citizenship of a stable country because you know end of the day if you stay in the country you need to make money if you're not making money what is the point of being there uh, point number 10 is Emirati businessmen will invest more globally and less locally. So it's it's pretty ironic and pretty odd. I mean, Emirati businessmen are asking, please come and invest in our country, but then they are not investing in their own. When they have the money, they're investing in some other countries because of stability. Then uh, point number 11, people who have changed their jobs, uh, those people who change their jobs uh, before Expo 2020 or during uh, Expo 2020, um, they will be employed for the next five years they don't have to worry but the people who have stuck to their job for many many years the dinosaurs they will end up losing their jobs because um, when you are in a job position for very many years you are earning the top salary and or you're earning the maximum salary so the management will always look at getting a replacement so when you get a replacement what happens is you at least give the person in the replacement position three years to five years to prove themselves and obviously you don't want to keep changing so people who have changed their jobs uh during expo 2020 or uh, just before expo 2020 your job is going to be stable however those who have stuck to their job until expo 2020 you uh, and have had a job for many years most probably you'll end up losing it point number 12 is majority of the properties will uh, that have not yet been constructed will either be abandoned construction will not be completed on time or they will just be left incomplete. So whomsoever has paid money for a project completion of five years or 10 years, get ready for it to be delayed even further or get ready for it to be abandoned or the owner or just to, you know, uh, put it on hold for some time. So that you'll see lots of this happening as well. And uh, keep in mind, uh, during Expo 2020, you have so many properties coming up. So uh when people leave who's going to stay in all these places and obviously when the price comes crashing down you'll have so many empty apartments and buildings so that is where these properties they'll realize there are no more buyers what do we do best one abandon delay or just leave it all together point number 13 is the completed projects that have been completed in a rush they will be delivered with very poor quality okay and uh, when you have like this rain and you know see uh, seeding that is being done in artificial rain the material the construction material that is used for constructing all this is not of very high quality uh, in majority of the cases what the contractors tend to do is they bid for jobs at the lowest price possible okay in order to get the job so that the workshop the people are just you know uh, not sitting there doing nothing so when they accept the job at you know uh, you know cost to cost what happens is you need to uh, you will start negotiating with the supplier in order to make a profit. So when you negotiate with the supplier, the supplier doesn't give you 
like premium material, he gives you a little less substandard. So everyone's trying to cut down their cost to make some profit. So over here, what happens is they either do, uh, they provide substandard quality, then they do the job in a hurry. Uh, you know, they're trying to cut corners everywhere. So the construction, overall construction, they'll deliver it. It'll look very nice, shiny, but the durability is very, very bad. And that is why people, once they move into the apartment, they'll feel everything is nice. But within a few months, you'll realize construction quality is very poor. We are having so many problems. And uh, that is where the hidden charges will start. Okay, you want to repair this, you need to pay money and you're going to, you're going to hear all this. Okay, point number 14 is almost all, uh, you know, landlords or uh, properties, they will change their rules. Now, this is something many uh, people who have purchased properties, they don't realize is uh, landlords and uh, property owners, uh, the, the main guys, okay? They have the best legal team to draw out the contracts for them. They pay a lot of money to get the best contracts done. And these contracts, the language is never straightforward. The language is, the language is always uh, technical in nature and each clause has a sub clause and there's always a fine print. One very important uh, loophole that they have in their system is that the landlord, the main, the main person who is making, drawing out the contract, he can change, add and subtract uh, parts of the contract, which the person, uh, the person who's moving into the house or the apartment or has purchased the small little apartment does not have the power. So when you sign, you agree to all the terms and conditions. This is where the contractors, they will change. They'll change the rules and they'll say, okay, from now you need to pay service charges. From now you need to pay repair charges. Oh, we have uh, garden maintenance, water maintenance, there's that. So you will have no choice. You'll just have no choice because if you refuse to pay, they'll cut your electricity, they'll cut your water. They can even tell you, I'm sorry, we have seized your apartment. You cannot move in. And uh, that is where if you protest, they can take you to court. They have the muscle, they have the power. You as an individual person cannot stand up against a company. Point number 15, all the construction uh, companies will bring in their secret charges to squeeze money. They will always bring up something or another. And uh, uh, from uh, like, for example, Demac, they had this um, uh, new change where you cannot bring outside service providers. You need to use only Demax cleaners or Demax engineers or Demax uh, electricity uh, electricians or Demax plumbers. So what happens is outside, if you're getting someone, it's let's say, for example, $100 uh, an hour, maybe Demac will charge you, let's say 150. I'm just giving an example. So this is another way how they can break uh, their contract or their deal, or it is something you didn't think about. You must have assumed uh, all these expenses are covered in for free. So this is where they'll also try to make money and squeeze money. Point number 16 is UE jails will be absolutely over full because of the number of people who are breaking their rules. Uh, you know, checks um, before it was, if you didn't pay uh, an amount, you'd be jailed. Okay, you would immediately be jailed. Now, the question is, how many people can you put into jails? UE jails are not designed to keep more than what it can handle. For example, a jail can handle 10 people. You can squeeze in 20, but you can't squeeze in more than 30, 40. So what will happen is because these jails will start becoming more and more full, they'll come up with new laws. Some of the laws that um, they have come up, which I've analyzed is, now they say, you'll not be put in jail, but your passport will be held. You'll be in the country. And until you pay, you will not be allowed to leave. That's why they said, they make it sound very sweet and nice. Oh, you don't have to worry. You can just uh, pay online. Uh, we'll just scan your eyes. We'll scan your face. Basically, what they're saying is, we've scanned everything. You can't go anywhere. Okay. Um, so they will just leave you locked in the country and you can't go anywhere. That's number one. The other one, so you don't have to actually be in jail. The other one is where you'll just be deported back to your country. Everything that you own, everything that you have will be seized because they can't keep filling up the jails. Uh, they don't have this. They don't have the capacity. They don't have the capability of keeping so many people. OK, point number 17 is many old businesses will shut down, especially, you know, areas like Mina Bazaar, Gold Souk, Dera Market, all the old traders. You'll see them shut shops. Um, over the past many months, I've received so many people 
who are there in UAE for 30 years, 40 years, you know, it's the generation, the business has been handed down generation after generation, and they are shutting down because of the various changes that are coming. The economy is not the same anymore. Okay. So you'll see many old businesses shut down. And, uh, you know, those people who have had business for so many years, they will just go back to their country or they lose everything. Uh, point number 18. Yes, point number 18. Old business owners who have not been, who have been very honest, those people will end up losing everything or um, they will just have to live on whatever was saved. And in many cases where uh, they'll actually be cheated by the landlord or by the creditors or by people who owe the money. Remember this, when you're going to, when people know that you're going to leave the country uh, and if they have to pay you money, they'll delay it or they'll start playing games because they know you have to leave the country. So you can't stay on. So there'll be many games happening and many horror stories which will not be reported. Point number 19 is people with partnerships, uh, they will have, they will be hit the hardest. Partnerships are like, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, when you're dealing with a partner, you're dealing with another human being altogether. Just as you cannot predict your mood swings, you can be very happy today, you can be angry tomorrow. How can you predict the mood swings of another person? You can assume that you know the person for many, many years. But then when it comes to do or die, or when it comes to survival of the fittest, people do crazy things. And that is why partnerships, business partnerships, either one of the partners will run away or the partner will encash on the checks or will do some, make some decision which will be very questionable. Um, I've been getting so many of these client calls where the guys have told me, my partner cheated me, I trusted him, I never thought he would do this, he's blackmailing me. You know, there are so many problems. And in some cases, uh, the guys made decisions on behalf of the company and uh, it has just ruined things, I'll tell you. When getting into a partnership, things are really great, but when breaking, it really messes up everything. Okay, point number 20 is um, there will be a lot of virtual businesses. There'll be internet-based businesses. There will be these, um, you know, UAE is making it so easy to create a business. So there'll be people who will make larger than life claims, who will be very, wow, what an amazing website, what is amazing. They'll have all these amazing claims. But in reality, they're actually nothing. They're just startups. They don't have anything. They're just trying to con people and get money fast. That is why you see so many of these store companies, so many of these travel companies, so many of these invest now, you know, coin companies, cryptocurrency uh, companies, advertising companies. They are, when you make something online or you make a business opening very easy with no verification, with no, um, you know, financial credibility uh, being proven, okay? This is what happens. You get plenty of scammers. And then point number 21, many businesses will take rental contracts, have offices in posh places, uh, but they don't actually have the capacity to deliver. This is especially true with recruitment companies. It's true with the migration companies. It's true with even property companies. They just have this amazing posh office. Um, you can buy furniture even from Ajwan or you can buy cheap Chinese furniture make the office look like wow have brand new staff give you big talk amazing service they'll take your money they'll promise you a service where you have to pay installments and you'll get it after like you know migration is never immediate it's after two years so you keep paying money 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 but the day you actually have to be given the results that is after two years by the time they have already shut their office and they have gone i know many cases where this has happened also Point number 22 is uh, my prediction for Expo 2020 is UAE police, UAE law, UAE courts will not be able to handle the amount of volume that comes in. The only people who are going to benefit from this are the lawyers, are the legal uh, intermediaries, you know, translation, you know, translating the documents, hiring a lawyer, uh, you know, payment of the court fees. Uh, you know, it's, it's like a well-oiled machine. They'll make the money. But serving justice, just imagine you made a court case and you have to go back and forth to the court with different dates for the next two years or three years or five years. It's going to break the back of many people. Uh, so they're not, they, they're not designed to handle volume. Okay. Point number 23, there'll be plenty of people in the law who will team up with fraudsters. This happens with all countries where money starts coming in. You'll see in the news, uh, they're making claims that uh, this person tried to bribe this police officer or this 
uh, person who was working for the government, they tried to bribe him. The reason why they bring out this news is to create fear that don't try to bribe uh, people of the government and people of the government are honest. The fact of the matter is uh, they only report the ones who are caught or they only report the ones who admit they don't report everyone. And it's not humanly possible to check each and every person. And just as uh, in every country in the world, government uh, people take bribes uh, here also, they you know, it's uh, because of the growth that is taking place, there will be plenty of people who will be doing, you know, under the table dealings. Uh, point number 24 is Dubai police uh, will have plenty of layoffs. Um, there'll be many people who will join and there'll be many people who will resign. Many Emiratis will also not want to work. It'll primarily be people of different nationalities who will be working with the police. Point number 25, there'll be plenty of non-locals who will be joining uh, these difficult positions, especially lower level, like uh, traffic police, let's say, uh, you know, the government jobs which are not in the AC or sitting in a very relaxed position. Um, these will be new recruits that also from different parts of um, the GCC. So you're going to see a lot of non-locals that they're not pure Emiratis. Point number 26, uh, prediction number 26 is 50% of the banks. My, um, this is what I firmly believe, 50% uh, of the banks will shut down because you have the highest number of banks uh, in ratio to the number of people in the UAE. The reason for this is because they give credit cards like they're giving, uh, you know, ice cream. And uh, um, they have exploited so many people that uh, the interest is the highest in the world that is in UAE. Highest in the world. Huh? So now it's no longer a feasible business. So that is why 50% of the banks will either shut down. And 50% of the bankers, people who have a banking background, they will lose their jobs. Especially the higher the person is. Um, the more stronger the chance of them losing their job. Point number 27, banks will not publish the real news. Banks will only, you know, repackage the news. For example, um, lately you must have seen, they saying we are digitalizing the banking process. We are putting everything online. Your business banking through your app. Now, they make it sound like it's, wow, oh, I can do banking through my app. I can do banking virtually online. I don't have to go to the branch. But what they're not telling you is, by you doing business online, you're not physically going to the bank. So when you're not physically going to the bank, the people who are there, they're not required anymore. So that means those people have lost their jobs. So banks will never publish the real news as dark, ugly, or bad. They will repackage this as very happy, happy news. Point number 28 is uh, most of the banks will keep only skeleton staff. They'll keep regional offices or they'll just have a branch over there just to make sure that their presence is always there, but they'll relocate to different parts of the Middle East where expenses are much more less. And like I told you before, now there's no longer unity. Each country is looking for survival of the fittest. Doha will also compete with Dubai, offering much more lucrative deals for um, businesses to set up over there. Uh, point number 29 is uh, you'll have... UAE will attract plenty of black money uh, and uh, money laundering will increase. Well, this is a given because um, the only way economy runs is if there is money that is rotating. If legally there is no money that is rotating in, I mean, how else do you attract money? Why will someone come and invest? So that is why a lot of people who have black money that is not accounted for. Um, they will want to bring it and they will want to open a business. So UAE, what it's going to do is it's just going to shut its eyes and going to say, Fine, you bring your money, you open a legal business here, will not question where the money came from, how, how are you earning all this money, where is the money coming from, open the business, do legal business here, fine. That is why you see supermarkets, hypermarkets, uh, new businesses, construction companies, all that illegal money that was outside not accounted for is being pumped into the country and they are opening a legal business and um, because UAE needs the money, UAE needs money to keep flowing in. Point number 30 is there will be a new generation of Emiratis and Arabs who are very educated, uh, who have gone and studied in, you know, some of the top universities, who have access to social media, who have access to information, who, Emiratis who are very educated, who are very classy, who are very modern, who are very contemporary, they will not agree with the past, with the old uh, system, with the old guard. There's a change of guard. 
So this new generation, for example, let's look at the UAE leadership. When you had Sheikh Zayed, you always had that leader who showed that he was working with the farmers, who 24-7 was going visiting, uh, uh, you know, the Emirati citizens, who was going helping people with money. Uh, he was never asking them, give me the receipt, give me the, the thing. If anyone needed something, they would say, you know, please, I need help. Sheikh Zayed was very generous. He used to always help. They used to dig wells. They used to make sure more trees were planted. He, Sheikh Zayed was, you know, obviously there was no uh, social media those days. He was not busy looking at how do I look in this photograph? How can I show my muscles? How can I ride the horse? No, he was busy working. Then came the next generation, Sheikh, um, the, the Sheikh Mohammed. Okay. Even Sheikh Rashid, Sheikh Mohammed's father, always working, always simple, living with the uh, citizens. Sheikh Mohammed became the flashy guy, became Las Vegas, became the Donald Trump. He was always meeting people, interacting, horse racing, rubbing shoulders, VIP. He was always the brand of Dubai, the biggest, the largest, the fanciest, the richest, um, you know, expensive cars. He made Dubai into looking like the Las Vegas. Now look at the third generation. The third generation is Faza. Faza is, I'm doing, um, you know, this... Um, uh, obstacle course, I'm riding a horse, I'm jumping from the airplane, I'm doing exercise, I'm doing jogging, I'm going for the marathon. Uh, you know, he's more into poetry, he's more into looking handsome, he's more into looking cute. Look at how rugged and hardcore Sheikh Zayed was working in the fields, working in the sun. Look at how Sheikh Mohammed was, flashy. Look at how Sheikh Faza is. You know, Emiratis, I'm, I'm, this is not my words. Emiratis are saying he's a, he looks like a pretty boy, you know. So there's, you know, there, there is a change, the change in the trend. Those days of working hard in the sun, of sweating, of being with the farmers, digging wells and providing the best life for these hardworking people, giving them money. Those days are gone. Sheikh Mohammed came and he made it very flashy. Let's show off. Let's show the biggest cars, the expensive life, the gold, the babes, the money. Come, Las Vegas. This is the Las Vegas of the Middle East. Well, changed. And now you have Faza. Pretty boy. He looks nice. He's, uh, you know, jumping from air, uh, aircrafts, skydiving. He's riding a horse. He is doing the obstacle race. He's doing exercise fitness. He's become more like an Instagram star. So see the difference. I'm, I'm not saying that this is bad. I'm just making you, I'm showing you the real picture. Do you ever think Sheikh Zayed would show you uh, all this? Would he, uh, would he try to look handsome and cute? And, you know, you can't even imagine that because for him, the ethics was hard work. It was... It was so ingrained in them. I'm not saying Faza is not working hard. I'm not saying, but there's a change in guard. Okay, let's move on to the next point. Okay, prediction number 31. More and more Emiratis are going to go abroad for education because obviously they'll realize that the quality education is not available in the UAE. That is why you see so many Emiratis, they send their children actually to London, to Europe, to United States. They never actually study in UAE. It's, it's such an ironical thing. It's like people, uh, UAE advertises itself as, you know, wow, you know, this education, come and study here. But local Emiratis, they don't study here itself. They go to different other countries. So they will go to other countries to educate themselves. But when they come back, they're actually going to expect very high salaries. Why? Because they spend so much money. They have now global education under their belt or degrees. But that will bring to the next prediction that is many Emiratis, um, many businesses, okay, they'll not be able to sustain, survive by employing them. So they will not employ Emiratis. They will not be able to employ many of them at least um, by pressure from the government, maybe one or two. But in the end, when they fail, this is going to cause a lot of chaos, a lot of problems for the government because you'll have many Emiratis unemployed. Okay, point number 33, um, Emirati businesses, many of them will start opening up. 
many uh, Emirati businesses will be encouraged to start and um, become like startup companies. Many of them will have their hopes and dreams to maybe become the next unicorn like um, soup.com or Kareem, you know. So they will start a very modern lifestyle. They will start to have hopes and dreams like this new generation that there is, that they can do something online, that they can be the next Amazon.com, that they can be the next Facebook. But 90% of them will fail. 90% of them will end up uh, losing all the money, burning their fingers. And that is why they will go back to the government and say, please help me. And the government will not be able to help all of them. Okay. Uh, the ones who will succeed are the ones that the media is going to advertise and make a big story that see another success story. They will only talk of the 1% or the 10% that have succeeded. The 90% they'll just try to keep hush hush. Okay. Point number 34 or prediction number 34 is UAE will, uh, UAE will do its best to attract foreign exchange or foreign investors to come into their country. But the money that they get, instead of investing it into their own country, once they get the money, they're going to use this money, some of it to invest here, but majority to invest outside. It's, it's really funny. huh? It's like you're asking people from China, come, come invest in the UAE. Your money is safe. People from China will invest the money in UAE. Once they get the money from the people in China, Little bit they will invest here, but majority they are going to invest through some other channel back into China. So it's a very funny game that they are going to do. So it's like your own money, I'm investing <laughs> back with you. Point number 35, um, UAE will constantly, or the developers, or the contractors, or the business hubs, they will take money, they'll make a lot of promises, but they'll not be able to deliver those promises uh, and it will not be allowed to publish in the papers, okay? Uh, you would see many people take to social media to complain about this and foreign newspapers talk about it because uh, it will not be allowed, okay, in the UAE. And uh, you will see many cases where they will drag the data delivery, where they will not keep up to the promise. You just have to go to Facebook groups where uh, these uh, developers promise this community, where they're going to have this training, where they're going to have this football academy, this cricket academy, this basketball coaching, gymnastics, shopping, so many things. If you bought one villa or bought this apartment in this area, but after they purchase the apartment, they purchase the villa, no, none of the academies, none of the promises, none of the training centers, nothing was open. Okay, so you're going to see plenty of this. Prediction number 36 is Dubai Islands. You know, the world islands, they're just going to be left dead. They're going to be eroded. Nobody's going to talk about them. Uh, prediction number 37 is Palm Islands. The other two, it's dead. It's finished. And Waterfront, they're just dead projects. Finished. Whatever money was pumped into that is all over. Point number, prediction number 38, Dubai construction. Uh, most of the construction that was made is going to fail the weather changes, especially now. You know, Dubai is supposed to be a hot country. It's supposed to be a dry country. But when you're having this seeding and you're having this rain, this material that was constructed there was only for sun, was only for dry weather. It was not for year-round weather. It was not for, you know, when you go to a wet country or a country that rains, the construction that is made is made for rain. It's not made for dry, hot, salty climate. So here, when you keep changing, the construction will get destroyed. So you're going to see plenty of construction fail and plenty of disasters. A case in point, the Dubai Mall. Okay, uh, prediction number 39 is Dubai Maktoum Airport. The majority is not going to be used. That's why they stop the expansion. That's why they stop expanding. Uh, hardly, hardly 20 or 30 percent is going to be used. They're going to keep pushing to for it more to be used, but it's an absolute utter failure. Prediction number 40, Dubai Logistics City and Dubai World Central will be an utter disaster. It's going to be a failed project once again. Great vision, great statements, nothing is going to happen. And they're also going to come out with Dubai District and uh, more promises, more districts. Nothing is going to happen. It only sounds good on paper, nothing in the real world. Prediction number 41, many decision makers of construction companies will be jailed. Their properties will be seized by the government. And uh, strong, stringent warnings will be given to more people who make these big claims. But Nakheel and Imar, the arm of the Dubai government, will be allowed to make these claims. Nobody else. Okay. 
Prediction number 42, many business people uh, and their businesses will be seized by the government due to non-payments or whatever. Ill assets and everything else will be just taken over by the government and, um, you know, they'll just close the case, finish. So uh, nobody's going to talk about it. Uh, prediction number 43, crimes will increase, scams will increase, uh, claims will increase all over the UAE. Prediction number 44, smuggling, uh, smugglers, mercenaries, uh, the underworld, especially the mafia and uh, corrupt politicians, all of them will come down to the Middle East, especially in UAE, to do business legally there. Prediction number 45 is Israel and UAE's relationship is going to grow. And this will be a shocker for many. And um, UAE will have to bear the brunt of the hatred of many Islamic countries because Israel and Palestine, you know, the drama that there is, and Jews and Muslims never get along, but uh, Israel and UAE will have a strong relationship. Uh, why? I'll tell you more about it in the coming points. Uh, point number 46, uh, Expo 2020 will succeed in terms of attracting 25 million tourists. In fact, my gut feeling says Expo 2020 will attract more than 25 uh, million tourists easily. In fact, they will break records. However, however, the drawback here is um, they attracted a lot of people, but the price or the cost per person coming down will not be profitable for UAE. In fact, it will be an expense. A UAE will spend a lot of money advertising, marketing, and getting these people down, but these people are not going to be spending much more money. Why? Because they were sold on an all-inclusive package to save cost, and that's the reason why they came down. Point number 47 is a lot of freebies will be given, a lot of support will be given, uh, to the Emiratis who participate in this uh, event because they want Emiratis to succeed. And end of the day, it's Expo 2020 is the main branding is UAE. So obviously you want more of Emiratis to be there. Okay. Uh, and also in this point, I would say they will request a lot of volunteering work to be done. And the volunteering work majority will be done by the expats, not by the Emiratis. Point number 48 is investors, powerful people, wealthy people will be forced, forced in the sense out of compulsion uh, and out of courtesy and politeness to invest um, in, um, in UAE. And uh, however, I'll tell you, these powerful people and wealthy people, they'll come down, they will show their support like from different countries to show I'm there for you, I'll support you. They will sign a mem uh, memorandum of uh, understanding. Um, they will you know, advertise this in the paper but they'll not actually uh, invest because when you're talking about money, people are very cautious. You remember what happened with WeWork and uh, SoftBank? Uh, they wouldn't want such a thing to happen here. Point number 49, the powerful expats of the UAE, the business community of UAE, um, well, they will, have, they will have no choice but to invest and be in the good books of uh, the UAE government uh, because the ruler, uh, there's already an un unofficial statement or rumor that the ruler personally sends letters to each and every of these powerful guys, these top guys, where he tells them, I'm looking forward for your participation in this exhibition, or I look forward to meeting you there. So when the ruler sends you something like this, you can't say, I'm sorry, I'm not participating. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm not there. If he sends you a letter and says, I look forward to meeting you there, you better be there. You better open up a stall. You better invest uh, in his exhibition because you can't say no to him in his country, in his backyard. So in this manner, many expats will be forced to make, forced to make big promises, big launches, big uh, sponsorships, um, and uh, they will be given, you know, publicity um, and mileage for whatever they have done. But uh, see, on one hand, the papers will make it sound like, wow, see, they believe in the leadership and they'll come out with these big things. I believe in the leadership, I believe in the country, I believe in the future. They will say all these things. The media will make it sugar-coated and nice. However, the back end will be a totally different story. Majority of them will end up just looking at this as, this. Is, okay, let's consider this as a tax, as an expense. They'll not be able to say anything. And in majority of the cases, they will just try to see how can we scrap the best out of this deal because, you know, you, you can't do anything. Which brings me to the next point, point number 50. The ruler will give many people uh, in an indirect not threats, I wouldn't say threats, but rather warnings that if you do not execute what is promised or you do not invest, where I'm asking you, 
well, you're going to have a lot of issues, problems, and uh, complications. So nobody would want to be in the bad books. Point number 51 is the media will portray Expo 2020 as perfect as it is. Every news being amazing, greater, larger than life. It'll be like, this is the first Expo in the history of all the Expos, which is such a grand success. Trust me, this is going to happen. Uh, prediction number 52, there'll be many outsourced companies um, that will be employed by uh, Expo 2020 from media to influencers to reporters to uh, tweets uh, to social media uh, bloggers uh, everyone and um, they also have uh, people who will uh, who'll supervise and who will keep an eye on anyone who tries to put anything negative that is that shows the reality, that shows the truth, or that shows anything negative. So many outsource companies will be employed. Point number 53, or prediction number 53, Expo 2020 is going to break a lot of world records, the biggest, largest gathering. They'll encourage people to actually break world records so that there'll be more publicity for Expo 2020. Uh, prediction number 54, hotels, tour companies, catering companies, organizers, event companies, artists, performers, they will make the maximum amount of money because they will be encouraged to come more and more, perform more and more. Uh, stars will come down. So you'll see a lot of this happening because they have to make it like Las Vegas. Uh, point number 55 is tourist companies. Lots of them will pop up. A lot of tour companies, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, just to take care of the tourists from, uh, you know, buying these squeaky gifts or mem uh, memorabilia. So many of them will pop up, especially to make a quick buck, and many of them will make a lot of money. Point number 56, many scams and scammers will be there to target tourists by giving them substandard experiences, substandard products, substandard, um, you know, uh, uh, products and services, basically. And, um, you know, once you have already given someone, you know, they'll be like, uh, okay, fine. They don't know whether this is authentic. They don't know what to expect. So they'll never be able to compare. Is this what the standard normally is? They just get something and by the time they realize is it good or is it bad, it's already over. Point number 57, plenty of fake goods, scammy stuff and, uh, you know, not regulated stuff will enter the market and it will not be possible to regulate each and everything. Point number 58, plenty of fake sales, you know, 90% off, 80% off, uh, you know, buy one, get three free and all that. They will be left, right and center with the only focus of old stock being sold off, getting rid of. You'll see plenty of this from Lulu to the government to they will. In fact, the government themselves will hold a sale. Open your stall here, sell all the stuff, 80, 90 percent off. They'll close their eyes and people will keep getting rid of old stock. The ones who will suffer are the people who are actually buying because it's without a warranty or you cannot give uh, you cannot get a refund. Point number 59, tons of fake hiring, fake promises while hiring and fake uh, you know, contracts will be issued and people will actually work. They might not end up getting the payment. I mean, who do you go to after you have completed an event and you're running Helter Skelter for getting your money? Okay. Uh, prediction number 60 is sporting, uh, fashion, gambling, parties, and, uh, you know, keeping you happy, the pleasure stuff. That will thrive like crazy. You're going to see this happening. And especially, you just have to Google online. You'll see massage, spa, uh, you know, I take care of you, you know, all that stuff. Uh, private Facebook groups, lots of them are going to pop up. I'm actually seeing them being sent to me almost every day. Point number 61 is many people will apply for business licenses, but they'll have many activities which will go under the radar or which they will not be reporting for. Okay. Uh, prediction number 62 is visa rules, licenses, laws, and many other strict, stringent policies that were there. They'll relax or they'll close their eyes or they'll allow for a little bit of variations, no problem, because there'll just be too many people, you know, and they also need to attract investors. So obviously they'll try to make it easier. Uh, prediction number 63, tons of unpaid amounts, tons of PDCs, tons of money that have not been paid or people who have not been paid, contractors, or even performers, uh, many such cases will be now, uh, you know, they'll be talked about in the market. But then again, remember, you cannot speak anything negative on social media uh, because that will be the rule. Uh, prediction number 64, many people will run away without paying money. Uh, point number 65, many fake influencers, sponsored ads, fake news uh, will be used to boost UAE, making fake claims that cannot be verified. And tons of made-up incidents, tons of made-up episodes will be aired and shared. 
Uh, I'll be speaking more on the examples of such, uh, you know, made up news where let's say, for example, an incident takes place. You will have two different versions of this. They'll only air the positive version of it. Okay. Point number 66 is a massive sex tourism industry is going to go really big. In fact, hotels will be providing such services to the VIPs much more openly than what they have been doing. And, uh, you know, like they say, if nobody complains about it, nobody makes an issue. Well, it's never going to be registered as a police case or it's not illegal. Point number 67 is hotel rules will relax a lot. Uh, before they would ask proof that this person is your spouse. Now they're not going to ask anything. You want to come and stay, just come and stay. No problem. Nothing asked. Point number 68 is international education are going to offer much more discounted rates. I'm already seeing that happen. They are going to make, uh, they're going to give you package deals. They're going to give you anything that will get you to sign the dotted line and for you to join. Okay. Uh, point number 69, universities will make grandiose claims that they, uh, that you can get a job here, that your career can be uh, recognized there, or this degree can be recognized in this country, just for them to sell their courses and for them to clinch a deal. Uh, and they will use loopholes extensively. Most of the students are going to fall for the beautiful brochure, beautiful claims, beautiful future, beautiful facilities. However, only after uh, it comes to encashing the degree, or after they get their degree, will they realize all these claims were fake and by the time it will be too late. Uh, point number 70, many youngsters will flood the market searching for jobs, uh, doing all sorts of jobs or jobs, trying to make quick bulk, quick money from being, you know, a promoter at Jitex to being security guys, to being DJs, to being uh, makeup artists, you know, influencers, whatever. It's going to flood the market like in very high numbers. They're going to be very happy, at least for the short term. Uh, prediction number 71, interns who are looking for jobs in corporate companies, you're going to have a very tough time, you're going to have a very rough time because companies are no, go no longer wanting to entertain interns because, you know, end of the day, you get experience uh, on their cost and it doesn't benefit them. Uh, prediction number 72, too many youngsters will try many weird ass careers uh, for Expo from opening up a stall, a stand or selling products and gifts. Uh, well, they will make money short term, but long term it will fail. And if they start expanding and believing that this is a bankable career, they are going to regret it. Um, prediction number 73, cryptocurrencies will be launched. Even the government will launch that. Um, but we know where this heads and how this uh, eventually comes down to. Um, they will ask you physical cash, actual cash, and they're going to give you some digital concept. In the end, the digital concept will fail. The physical cash is lost. Okay. That, that's why, you know, it's a very simple thing. How do you buy a cryptocurrency? You buy it with actual legal cash. Okay. Uh, there's no other way. So the legal cash is the foundation. So without this, nothing else exists. Uh, point number 74, tons of under the deal, uh, under the table deals will be done. So many things which are not actually shown legally. Uh, point number 75, many new concept, you know, concept like this concept car, this concept uh, solar paneling or concept uh, you can study at home or you can do this from your house. Many such new concepts will be launched. Many such apps will be launched. Many such futuristic uh, promising, promising careers will be launched. Uh, all of them will fail. All. This is Take it from me. Uh, they're trying to reinvent the wheel. You can't reinvent the wheel. Point number 76. Uh, futuristic uh, launches will be promoted and touted in the media. You're going to see many such, you know, floating taxis, flying taxis or uh, zap from here to there. Or you can order petrol through an app. You can order food through an app. Organic food uh, will be sent to you and all that. All this bullshit is going to be uh, launched. Uh, none of it will work. Point number 77. Rents will uh, go up when there is demand. But when nobody is there, they're going to crash it down. They're going to get you in. Once you get in, somehow they'll try to keep you in. But after that, they'll start to give you hidden charges here and there. And it's going to be a big blood, a big headache. Yes, initially, you will have a little bit of recourse. You'll have like, oh, rent has come down, but don't bet on it. Uh, point number 78, rules. There's never going to be any stable rule. In fact, you will be confused. What is the rule? Is it? Is it, you know, is this the rule or is that the rule? There'll be plenty of confusion here. Point number 79, crimes and problems that happen during Expo will never be reported. Um, point number 80, the crimes and problems in Expo simply will never take place. Why? Because uh, the major, major crimes or major problems. Why? Because they will ensure that the top-notch security, the top-notch uh, spies, the top-notch 
the biggest devils are going to be there. So that is why you're not going to have uh, many very big crimes. See, it's a very simple. Okay, let's say for example, I'm afraid of the the big bad uh, you know mafia here. For example, small. So if I'm afraid of them, the if I go to the law, maybe they can't predict. So what do I do? I go to the biggest, the biggest mafia, and they would be standing here. So when you have when you have the type with the biggest bad guys. You wouldn't be afraid of the small guys. I'm just giving an analogy. This is not the actual thing. So in the same way with Expo 2020, they're going to tie up with the biggest, baddest guys. So the small guys can't do anything. Um, point number 81, Israel will offer and provide the best technology to ensure each and every person that comes in and out of UAE is monitored and it'll be under Israeli technology. Uh, point number 82, Israeli technology will be fused into all UAE networks. Point number 83, the best brains from United States, USA, USSR, Europe, FBI, CIA, the best brains from there are the ones who are retired, are going to, even the top hackers, they would be working uh, for the UAE on a freelance basis uh, because, you know, how else do you monitor? You can't have uh, USA being officially tied up. So you'll have uh, people who have worked for the company, but now they are retired. They'll be working because they'll pay them good money. Point number 84 is every cell phone, every computer, every laptop, anything that connects to Itisalad and you uh, do will be scanned. Uh, I'm sure you will panic, but I'll tell you the next point will solve your problem. Point number 85, for small shit like you send a forward, a WhatsApp, a message, uh, you're watching porn, uh, having sex chats, they aren't going to bother with all this shit. They are only going to focus on anything that involves national security, like for example, terrorist activity, ISIS or anything bombing, they're only going to focus on this. They're not going to focus, oh, you are sending, uh, bad-mouthing uh, the ruler privately to your friend. They're not going to, oh, you spoke bad, I'm going to catch you. No, they're only going to focus on the big things. So plenty of resources are going to be focused on national security, not you watching porn. Oh, they're going to catch you because you watched uh, this female's tits and all that. Okay. And point number 85, um, no, sorry, 86. Um, there'll be each and every person is going to, from the eye scan, face scan, bank scan, ID scan, every person's data is going to be structured and kept and data are going to be uh, maintained. Uh, point number 87 is no royal deaths will be reported during this big event. You're not going to have, let's say, for example, a big ruler, uh, he died, okay, one of the ruling family members. When a ruling family member dies, uh, you know, they have to have an official period of mourning. They're going to shut down all celebration, all alcohol, all everything. They're not going to have this because if they do, it's going to create losses in millions and billions. Small time, yes, they'll report. Big time, they most probably will not report. But even if they do report, they're not going to stop the festivities because they're going to lose billions if they do that. Okay. Point number 88, plenty of tourists will be robbed in small ways here and there. But the, the ones who try that funny stuff, they will be caught. Why? Comes to the next point. Point number 89, bodyguards, security guards, special forces, CID, FBI, undercover agents, everywhere. You'll have plenty of them in many places, all hidden undercover. And uh, anything that you do, which is suspicious, you will be caught in seconds. Okay. Uh, it's going to be scanned left, right and center. Point number 90, a lot of subtle messages about uni uh, unity, diversity, opportunity, love, religion, peace, security, vision, growth. All these wonderful positive messages are going to be constantly sent ar around the world in connection to Expo 2020. Prediction number 91, strict instructions will be laid to the government, to the employees, to the media, to the team with regards to Expo 2020 and its branding uh, because each and every person represents a brand. So very strict instructions will be given. Point number 92, construction will not be completed 100%. It'll be forced, it'll be rushed, it'll be unsustainable, especially after Expo 2020. Uh, prediction number 93, many people will be completely burned out after this event or during this event. You'll see a lot of uh, uh, replacements, a lot of changes uh, in many different positions. Point number 94, in the beginning, it'll be plenty of fanfare and wow, but actually there'll be tons of confusion, plenty of mistakes. Many terminations will ensure, uh, many heads will be asked uh, to leave, many new replacements will be asked to join, major gaffes and incidents and accidents will take place. However, none of this will be reported, uh, especially the major ones in the papers. Point number 95, 
there will be emergency social media units uh, on standby to ensure nothing negative goes out. And if anything does start, it's going to be cut uh, to the butt, like they say. Uh, point number 96, during the last uh, days of Expo 2020, many companies, majority will go in emergency mode of selling off everything, getting rid of the old stock because they do not want to put back stuff in the container and ship it back. So they're going to get rid of this at a throwaway price. So if you want to purchase anything, wait till the last days. Point number 97, in terms of the job market, the shocker will be, uh, this is a major shock, okay? Um, companies will pay a lot of good money for the right candidates. Um, so if you want to make good money, this is your chance. It's good to change your job during Expo 2020 or work for a company that is actively participating uh, or trying to start something new during Expo 2020. Trust me, you will get good money if you know how to you know, market and sell yourself. Uh, uh, point number 98, retail sales will not be that great in terms of profitability. In terms of sale, money will come and money will go. It'll keep rotating. Point number 99, if you are into sporting events, fashion, uh, sales of uh, you know unique items car showrooms conferences seminars and events you will make money here okay and last if not the least last if not the least post expo 2020 after expo 2020 is over the place will be deserted it'll be completely empty most of it will be not used or not be uh, beneficial um, there will be plenty of emirati businessmen who will flee or who will take the investments into many other stable economies uh, countries like Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, China, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, these countries will actually see much more of the investments come in, not even uh, countries like USA or the stable economies. You'll be surprised, even in Russia or even in Thailand, they'll bring the investments here, but they'll not put it in the Middle East countries. So these were my 100 predictions for UAE uh, post Expo 2020 or during Expo 2020. Which one do you agree? Which one do you not agree? Which one do you believe? You're right on this, or which one you say, now Lloyd, this is rubbish. Let me know in the comment section below. I will read all your comments and I will uh, respond to all of them, or at least you'll see my reaction to that. So I'd love to hear what you have to say. Let me know your thoughts. This is me signing off for now. Take care. Are you fed up of life? Earning a pathetic salary, working long hours, having an ungrateful boss, facing office politics, the constant fear of losing your job, and after paying rent, groceries, shopping, and children's expenses, you were left with hardly any savings. Is this the life you dreamed of? Or do you wish to change your life forever? Meet Loy Macedo, the world's number one personal branding coach. He will help you identify the real you. Position and sell yourself by getting the job of your dreams and make good money anywhere in the world. If you do not believe me, Google his name, Loy Macedo, and you will find 2 million web links online and over 200 recommendations from very happy clients. So the question is, do you want to change your life? If yes, then contact Loy Macedo. www.loymacedo.com Whoismacedo.com ThinkPersonalBranding.com What are you waiting for? Do it now.